Thank you for attending the 2016 State of the Disc Address of the Philippine Flying Disc Association. Um, we have very big attendance. <laughs> uh, we have some extra beers there. Um, so today we're going to be discussing 2015 in review um, uh, to be discussed by Peng um, and 2016 plans. Um, be discussed uh, to be discussed by several people here in the meeting. Um, so we have a camera on board just so that this meeting will be available to um, those that cannot attend um, for whatever reason, um, those in provinces or those busy today. Um, so how it will go is there will be the presentation. Um, We'll have a question and answer portion right after the presentation, and we'll take a couple of items from the Google survey that was released in the other day. Um, yeah. If there are no other questions, um, we can begin. Okay. It's okay. Let's go. <laughs> May I call upon the PFA board up here to join me? Don't die up. Hey, thank you, Seth, for, uh, for arranging this. Uh, bear with me, please. Ah, I have a sing speech na pin repair. Okay, meron meron counting ano uh, mga pictures just para lang ano para lang may counting visuals. Uh, anyway, no, oh, pwede tayo lumapit para pag dinatin yong mga maya mas malapit. Jud, mga salita mga maya. Anyway, so 2015 was another memorable year for Philippine Ultimate. Looking back at what happened, I can't help but feel a lot of pride for our country, for the Ultimate that we play here, and for all the hard work of countless selfless and silent individuals who made it possible. Um, immediately upon assuming office last year, your newly elected board, uh, made up of uh, Karen Cabrera of the Boracay Dragons, si Kenneth De Guzman of uh, uh, Alpha Slash Duo, <laughs> and uh, si Cedric of then Duo, di ba? Pero now Warriors. <laughs> Forever Warriors. And uh, si Marta Mina, who's not here right now, of La Salle. Um, like meet kami kagad. We went about meeting right away. Uh, what our agenda should be for the for the no, for this coming term. And then we met with the outgoing board for a simple turnover. We had a simple dinner. Uh, then after much discussion, both boards uh, decided to give three thousand pesos to the no, to the Boracay Dragons campaign for no, WCBU. Three hundred thousand. What did I say? 300,000 pesos, sorry. 300,000 pesos. Okay. It's a small amount. Diba? It's a small amount compared to the gargantuan effort um, put out by Sina James Yap. I think around I know, 2 plus. I mean, estimate it's around 1.5 to 2 million. It's a fair assumption for Dubai. So, anyway, parang the way I see it, kasi it was. Our contribution, maybe it was enough for let's say for 
for Bochok to get a layout D or for for April to ano, di ba? Pag nakakain sila ng mabuti, baka, you know, April can sky somebody or if, you know, Popoy can, can you know, make a bid for someone or make these throws. Maybe it might be enough that 300,000 might be enough for us to secure a gold medal in WCBU. But, but medyo, medyo nagkulang tayo. Okay, we, we lost. We lost to, uh, to, to Great Britain in the Open, in the open Division uh, during the eliminations. That set us on a course with, uh, with the USA in the semifinals. And uh, I remember that, I, I remember watching that, and then that, uh, that USA finals, uh, no, that USA semifinals game. And that should have been the finals. You know, a lot of people thought that should have been the finals. But it was, uh, we lost, we lost Universal Point. And then we, we eventually got the bronze medal against, you know, against, was it Canada? Um, In the Open Masters. Was it GB or Canada? I don't know. Anyway, I, I, think, Canada. I think it was Canada. Canada, no? Canada, and then I, I can't help but think that if, if it was the finals, if it wasn't the semis, if it was the finals of the open, open division of the WCBU, maybe it would, it would have been a different story. Maybe it would have won it. Anyway, but we salvaged the bronze medal. In, in, you know, in, in, in the Open Division. And surprisingly, we even got the bronze medal in the Open Masters Division. Yeah? Uh, I, I, I'm sure everybody here saw the, you know, the live stream of you know, the Canada versus, you know, versus USA, uh, sorry, Philippines. Canada versus Philippines game, we're in, you know, these 33, up, you know, 33 and up people from the Philippines defeated the Canadian team via that, you know, that you know, that forehand hack by Derek Ramsey to a, you know, to a, to a Will Steedman na mag-isa lang sa Enzo. And then, when, when Will got the disc, dumapa lang siya and everybody just ran. I vividly remember that moment. Purin ako dun eh. It was just, ano, it was just an amazing feeling for the country. Eh? And even, ano, uh, so that, yun yung, ano, so, what we're saying is that, you know, we, we, we did a little contribution for that. And hopefully, we hope that it helped you know, bring home those two, two, two bronze medals. And then after that, there was a no, there was a uh, there was a U23 program. You know, it was you know, there was this big fiasco online. And then, but but despite that, we, you know, we we gave money to the, you know, to the to the team going to the two teams going to the you know, to the to London. We we paid for the team register you know, for both teams, team registration fee, uh, and we even gave a little bit of money. No, no. Uh, I think more than Tamo okay? uh, Less than 100. How much? 25 each. I was thinking 50k something. I don't know. Small amount also. But you know, it, it, it's, it's still money. Right? After that, you know, the, the next big story was nationals. Right? And, Bacolod became the no, Bacolod became the venue of the 2015 nationals. Uh, with a lot of support from the Bacolod government, from the Bacolod city government, with uh, with smart communications, uh, giving also giving money, and uh, si, si brother Dennis Magbanwa of ano, of uh, then CSB slash DLSU TAF slash Kandubang, also giving in 100,000 pesos to help us with uh, with, uh, with the staging of nationals. Everybody witnessed that. Well, everybody that you know, everybody was there saw so the nationals, di ba? Nalala nyo yung, nalala nyo yung Panahad Stadium, nalala nyo yung game against Dumaguete Extreme, and SD, how it was, you know, I think it was the most epic, epic uh, national finals in my, you know, in the past three or four nationals that we've had. I, I, I remember the crowd, eh. I remember the crowd. Hindi siya pulo, kasi lahat Panahad eh. Yung Panahad can seat more than a thousand Several thousand people, but there were only 300, 400 people there. But you felt like there was more than a thousand. So there was, there were so many people. Anyway, so I remember that moment, and I remember everyone was so happy. Everyone had a wonderful time. Yeah. And uh, and since this is on video, I'd like to thank. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, 
sina ano sina Rafael Penteveglia and and his dad then mayor ano uh, mayor Penteveglia for helping us out they paid for a lot of the ano they paid for a lot of the expenses for nationals they paid for the fields they paid for the trophies the medals the manpower you know, uh, it was really you know, it was really the local government doing a lot to help us okay? aside from of course you know C Smart and C Brother Dennis for you know, for creativity. But also I'd like to thank I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank several individuals who were there. Like see, you know, um see Rose Lynn, and uh, and the and the people from Smart actually. Sina Epo Kimpo, Sina Paul Dizon, the people from Smart Ultimate, Sina BJ, Levita, Sina Joe, Sina Susie, they were all instrumental in helping us push the agenda with Smart. Also, see Carlo and Daya, if, if you know him. Um, then came the 2015 Manila Spirits. Now, kicking off with the Showcase Games, sponsored by Boom Technical Clothing. Uh, thank you also, hey, Alduin, for, for helping us out there. And then, of course, there was Eric. Yeah, and of course, Jolas. Jolas, when you're in the Valley, salamat. Uh, and Eric, of course, see, see Jim was there to help us all out. Um, just to clarify, uh, see, Alduin spent a lot of money for, you know, for, for, the, for, that, you know, for that showcase game to happen. I think around, around 700,000. Right? Um, see, Eric, yes, Eric, see, Jim also spent a lot of money to, to get the American teams here. And the PFDA spent also a lot of money to bring the Japanese team here. So without those three, you know, three, three groups working together for several months, Kasi June pa lang, pinag-uusapan na, pinaplano na namin yun. May, may pa lang, nasa utak na namin yun. June, sinimulan namin yung plan sa hen. Tapos biglang nangyari yun. And everybody just saw. Di ba, wala masyadong alam, di ba? Di ba, just a poster. Tapos mga sinasabi ng mga tao, ano yan? Tapos biglang nakita nyo na lang, nandun na si na Bokeh Dredge, nandun na si na Matsuno. But that was several months worth of work with a lot of people putting a lot of money in. Um, Everybody remembers yung, yung greatest ni ano, greatest ni Popoy, yung mga grabs ni Bochok, si Bochok. Hey, tapos yung, yung ako napansin yung si Jimmy, si Jimmy idol ko na ngayon kasi ang bait pa ng tao na. Tapos si OP, si Claire, De, si Claire Desmond, yung mga layout nila, and of course yung mga how many skies ni Bo, I don't know. Who can forget those, diba? And in, even the Japanese attack, that, 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 that vertical stack with no dump. Na, ngayon lang natin napansin, pero matagal pa nilang ginagawa. Anyway, so yun pa lang yung kick-off. Diba? But, Manila Spirits, the tournament proper itself, uh, there were 64 teams. 64 teams in, in the mixed division. And there were 8 or 12 in the... 12? 12. So, that's 74 teams, which technically made that the biggest Spirits ever. So far, I hope there's a bigger spirits in the future, right? And I hope the people who played with the American All-Star teams, uh, all the local teams, the Dragons, uh, Alpha, Sid Vicious, S uh, S -S 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 all those teams that had these players, you know, you know American All-Star, I, I hope you learned a lot from them. Because it was a really difficult process getting all of them to agree to, there's a drama that you know, na. I na maglaro, gusto na maglaro, tapos eventually they all agreed na sige, maglaro na lang tayo. And I hope people think that was a great experience. But, you know, there were no bigger stars during the tournament than the sublime Club Junior Japan Ultimate Team. You know, we were dazzled by Matsuno, by, by Suzuki, by... Si yung pangal, kaya siyang pangal Pogi. <laughs> Nakamura. It's great. At that dude. <laughs> Parang ang dami kong nakita ng babae nagpaano eh. Nagpakuha sa kanya eh. Uh, anyway. Basta, sige na, pogi na siya. Sige. Anyway, so we were all just dazzled by those players. And since 2006 in Perth, we saw them play. We saw, we saw the bus bullets defeat an Australian team that were, that were, that were, who were taller, who were stronger pero kinda ni nila yung yung Australian team sa finals na ano ng open na ano, ng open division sa World Ultimate Club Championships 
And after that, ako matagal ko na inisip, and a lot of people thought, I think, the same way I did, how we could bring the Japanese you know, to play here and show everyone the kind of ultimate that the Philippines needs to be playing. Because <coughs> right now, most of our game is really, you know, it's really about skies and hawks and you know, which is really North America. Ay, nakailangan malaki ang mama para malaro mo yun. Pero you saw, I, I hope that people are practicing their daggers right now, their blade throws, diba? because they saw the Japanese do it. Ay, yun, yun, yun lang yung purpose no. And we, we exerted a lot of effort for that as a board to, to, to make that possible. Wait, see. So, all right. Sorry, yeah. Um, and after, after Manila Spirits, sorry, I'm, I'm, bear with me, I'm recapping the year. Uh, so after Manila Spirits, what happened? There was AOUC 2015. Uh, we, the PFTA decided to have a to have an application program for for the for the potential players, there were a lot of people who submitted, and uh, there was a there was a committee that we that we formed to organize it to make to choose players. These were see you know see Judy here right now as the head coach, and then for women's we had Lima Chanko, for mix we had Carlo Corpus, for uh, open we had Wendy Simbulan. And uh, the fifth member of the team, C. Karen Cabrera, uh, served as the manager of the team. The PFTA allocated 200,000 pesos for that, uh, for, that, uh, for that tournament. 200 pesos that we earned, 200,000 pesos that we earned from the 2015 Nationals, from the, from the sponsorship of, uh, of Smart in, uh, in La Salle. But the PFDA did not, uh, no, did not. Uh, um, it was Judy who decided on the on the expenditures. We gave him authority to uh, to decide whether, you know, how, how to spend that money. <coughs> and guess what? We sent three teams. We got three medals. Right? We got we got a gold medal, uh, no, some mixed division, and we got two bronze medals, open and <coughs> and women's division. <coughs> I think by far that's probably the most successful. Uh, that, yeah, it is. That's the most successful tournament that the Philippines has ever joined internationally. And even you, ane, even you, 2012, na, na, because before that, I think in 2012, na, na, na outing ng Philippines sa Worlds, the WGC sa Sakai, Sakai where, where we finished seventh in mixed division and you know where, where we won the open division for. Uh, the spirit of the game for open division. Para before the AOUC, you know, you know, para to get three medals and to get a gold medal in the mixed division, defeating Japan and Australia. Para kahit ba yun? Then the uh, even before the even before the even before spirits, uh, there were also ano, uh, si Karen organized. The Tyler Kinley Clinics. For those of you who don't know, see si Tyler Kinley is a decorated player and coach in the U.S. He was a captain of Seattle Sakai. Seattle Sakai, one of the top teams in the U.S., and was in the 20, 2011 and 2015 uh, World Championships of Beach Ultimate Team na, 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 of the USA. He he did he did he's a coach and he did several clinics around the world. He also worked with Rise Up, I think, for a while. And he came here. He did um, five clinics in the Iloilo, in Davao, Iligan, Cagayan de Oro, and uh, he even had a special, you know, special clinic for Team Philippines. Uh, the objective was to bring, uh, to share his knowledge about leadership and coaching. So this was really para teachers, you know, para trainers training, in this specifically for you know, for athletes, uh, for the actual players. Uh, we prioritized the PFDA members, the, the people who attended nationals. Uh, but there were also a few people who attended who weren't, uh, weren't technically PFDA members. And uh, hmm. the participants learned about the team foundation. I think in season planning, dun yun, dun din yun, di ba? season planning, 
uh, how to motivate the team and players, team culture, uh, how to formulate drills. Uh, most of the participants, especially the people in the provinces, which is four out of five, were extremely grateful for the opportunity. Anyway, so that's you know, that's the year you know, 2015. Uh, Okay. I'd like to take this opportunity <laughs> no, no, to, uh, to share with you a few things also, no, no, what I've learned. Um, I've been in the board for the past two years. Uh, two years starting last periods, uh, the previous periods. So for the past two years, I've been, you know, I've been fortunate to serve the community the way that I thought no, no, was best for the community. Um, I think uh, when I when I started, ang ano ko lang, ang gusto ko lang sana mangyari was to create the foundation or to start something new, you know, to 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 lay the groundwork for for future people to ano, to to how do I say it? To grow this community. Okay? Uh, that's why parang pinush talaga namin to have to have nationals in Mindanao for the first time, you know, despite a lot of opposition from a lot of people. We, we really tried to, even though wala kami kilala sa ano, wala kami kilala sa Davao, sa Tago, you know, we, we, we talked to the mayor, we talked to the, you know, to the people of the governor, but eventually we did it. You know, just to, just to be able to start, just to be able to tell people na pwedeng gawin yan. And we, we even organized a space that, you know, na hindi namin alam na kaya namin i-handed, na ang laki-laki, na, you know, I, I remember si Tish yung ano niya, yung comment niya about, the, 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 uniform, the, the cohesiveness of the of the team. Parang, okay, parang when I read that, parang, okay, parang masaya naman. A lot of people remembered it and a lot of people were happy. I was, I was very happy with that. So I was really looking forward to topping it dun sa next periods. And I think medyo, ano naman, medyo mas naalala siguro ng mga tao yung, ano, yung 2016 periods kung para sa 2015 periods. So I think medyo na, ano naman, nasapawa naman namin yung, ano, yung spirits na yun. Um, moving forward. Moving forward. Right, 2016. This is a new year for us again. And uh, my my wife and I have ano, si Dindi, my wife. Right, what what's been supportive the past three years? We we talked a lot and we decided na no, maybe you know, now it's really time for me to move on. I have I have several things that I need to do with my with my career, with my businesses that are not enough, that are not related to the community. So I would like to announce that uh, starting today that I'm resigning from the board. That this is my last day as an, as president of the PFDA. Um, like I said, we need to know we need to focus on you know, for the past three years, uh, two years, guys. Uh, I've been remiss with uh, handling your family business name and the social enterprise that I started. I have a little, I have a little business. I have a little bamboo business. We have a little farm that we employ you know, several people from the community to help us out. And you know, we, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to make something up, no, no, to make a sustainable social enterprise out of it. And the past two years, I haven't been focusing on it. And my partners, the people who Gave money to the to the to the company. <laughs> Medyo, they're starting to ano, they're starting to ask me, okay, when are you gonna devote more time?" So, since this is not earning me anything, and I need to earn for my family, um, I think it's an easy well, it's not an easy decision leaving leaving the community, uh, leaving the ser serving community. But it's really something that we have we have decided as ano, as a as a couple and as a family. And I leave it in, you know, in the capable hands of the people behind me to, you know, to, to plan and decide the next steps for the community. Um, what are the lessons I've learned? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I was talking to Karen yesterday. I was looking at Sano. I was remembering the first time that I threw a disc. Nandun sa isang malit na corner ng Sunken Garden, where we used to have leagues. I remember the community being just six, six teams back then. And 
I, right now, in Metro Manila alone, I think we have more than 70. And the way that it's happening right now, and I'm sure the search will agree, uh, you know, we really need to be a, uh, you know, a better family. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm to blame for it for some of the you know, some of the issues, but I don't know. You know, Anohoy, I'm not really sure how 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 to settle things. I'm sure some of you have ideas, which later on we will discuss inside when we have an open forum. But but uh, really, for for a lot of us who play this game. Not just because of you know, not just because of your competitiveness or whatever. We really play it because you know, it's, it's family. You know, we, we involve our families, we involve our friends. This is where we found you know our our significant others, the right? Jody, Chris, Pinangila, and what about Tikbajan? Si Wang Chang si Kat and si Kol several times. I know, and that, except for you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you have better ideas than me. See, I, I married outside of the community. <laughs> but, but really, it's 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 something that I miss. I mean, I, I, definitely the, the 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 level of competitiveness right now it's it's all time high. As in. Young Japanese, they're they're looking at us. The Americans are look, they're, they're forming an all-star team for Pan's World. Hindi na sila ano. All of these people are their eyes are on us, and I think it's a great time for us to ano, to show the world that you know that the Philippines is a great community. Hindi na tayo about about dazzling place, but we're also great warm people that you know that they can all go to to have great tournaments. Anyway, um, bef before we have the open, uh, no, open, the open forum, uh, we'd like to share a few, uh, no, a few of the plans for 2016. At least the ones that we worked on. Um, <coughs> Ken, you want to take the? Uh, oh, yun sa anes yes, sorry. Um, Everybody knows that the nationals will be in. Uh, we've announced that nationals will be in Clark, right? um, uh, uh, We're still finalizing the venue because we have two options in uh, Clark: the Clark Parade Grounds and the villages where we had Kabalin. Uh, I was there last weekend. Medyo hindi ganon kaganda yung condition ng grass, so we're looking at another option: the villages, which is a uh, uh, medyo Manicured fields, yun. Mga baseball fields, yung maganda, yung, ano, maganda, yung, maganda yung grass. Plus, there's a swimming pool, may villa sa tabi, meron na siyang party area, so everything is just there. So, the idea, what we were conceptualizing with this nationals was that everybody's gonna be there, and kami mag, mag, mag sponsor, well, yung PFTA board will sponsor barbecues every day. So every all the people there, all the participants will just be having barbecues every day after all the games, just to make it really a family affair. Now these teams are the 16 teams there are not just battling it out to be the national champions, but really it's all about you know being closer as a community, you know spending time with your opponents, getting to know them. Para kung dating sa field, you know if there's an altercation, you have something else to share. Maybe maybe hopefully mas spirited yung mga laro. But with the, with the, can you want to share the, the, the new teams that are joining? Okay. Uh, four team teams, uh, four Manila, uh, Sid Vicious, SP, uh, Alpha, Pancake, SP Black, and Duo. And then for Mindanao, ang mga nag-confirm is Mulato, Luman, and CGY Kamiyan de Oro. <coughs> Tapos, uh, meron tayo from Palawan din. Ito yung 5.30. Tapos, sa Visayas, uh, Dragons, Burakay Dragons, Burakay Ultimate, and Panay Intensity. Uh, yung, ayun, so, 14 yun. Ah, sorry. Extreme Dumaguete. And so, apat 
na Visayas. Ito yung nag-top nung Bacolod, parang top 8. Eh, yung top 4, 4 of 8 galing sa Visayas. And then, 4 nationals ang magpa-cover nung event is Multiverse. And si Don accident for uh, photo PUI. And then, gagamitin natin for nationals yung Ulti Analytics na app. So, pwede siya download sa Android. Pero pag iOS siya, it's iOS. So, for now, yun muna yung details for nationals. Uh, date is May 28th, eh, two, two days. <coughs> Do you have something to say about the TV program or you want to say something about it? Uh, sure. So, yeah. yeah, this is the, the TV program that the uh, Judas heading uh, is preparing for Worlds this year. So, so. Thank you. Um, yeah, guys, so. Uh, well, I want to mention a couple of things. Uh, Peng did an update earlier about what happened in 2015. Um, he talked about Dubai. Um, I, I know for a lot there was disappointment we didn't get the gold. Um, but again, the two bronze, a fifth place finish, and the girls, I think, six or seven. Uh, one of the things that did was earn us a lot of points um, in, the nas in the rankings. I think we jumped on the seven or eight spots. Uh, in the international ranking. So, you know, I think that was still a very big step. And that's one of the things I'd like to keep pushing with this TP program, try to get us hopefully someday into the top 10, okay? Um, going to London, um, yes, the, the, the results on the field were not that great, but uh, I do want to mention, uh, thank Ping. He invited me to come coach. I was able to coach the Open team uh, that won the Spirit Award. Okay, so to me, that was a very um, positive result. Um, I'm, I'm part of the World Flying This Federation Spirit Committee, and they released a ranking after that tournament. And again, we jumped from about the 33 percentile to the 50 percentile. Uh, from the performance of the teams at that tournament. So again, um, the results on the field might not have been that great, but it really did a lot for our country and uh, the way people view us and uh, improving our overall spirit in an international level. So um, going to the TP program, um, uh, as Peng mentioned, they selected some coaches, assigned me head coach past September. Um, when I took the position, basically they were offering me head coach of AOUC and London, and I said I'm, I'm not really interested to be just a head coach for that. To me, I would be willing to take on the position if I could have the authority to develop a program, a real sustainable program that goes every year, that develops Philippine Ultimate, that teaches the skills, the fundamentals, and the spirit uh, to help improve Philippine ultimate all around, all around the country as a whole, uh, not just kind of what was happening before is, okay, prepare for you, you see in London, compete, and then throw everything away, and the next tournament, we start from scratch again. So the idea is to build a program that really has a structure, as players and you know develop players and keep on going so that that's kind of my goal um, we started out um, with a schedule for this year uh, some tie-up tournaments in the pro provinces um, I had talked to MMUC about uh, the plans for Manila uh, unfortunately there was a lot of uh, problems here in Manila uh, they changed some of the scheduling, but again, I, I am still going to be talking to them, working with them, because for the Manila program, uh, every TP team that I've been a part of, and again, the same thing happened at AUC, and, um, is we could never get enough people to practice, to actually scrimmage and train properly. 
So my goal, um, and I'm going to still be pushing this with MMUC, uh, is the idea was to have training during league days. So um, like for this league, we actually had two days scheduled for training. It was supposed to be pool A, seven games, three games one day, two games, two games, uh, one hour games. So there was still time and energy left in the players to practice uh, in the afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, there was a last minute change lengthening the game, so that, that became um, not doable. But again, I still plan to try to um, talk with them to work with that so that basically throughout the year there's always going to be these TP practices. The idea being is every Pool A team should have players represented there. Uh, maybe a couple of guys, a couple of girls, um, as well as you know all the other people we select for the program. Um, so basically the idea being is if everyone is part of this program we have our trainings that hopefully they can learn something, bring it back to their teams. Okay, so that's kind of the, the concept for Manila. For the provinces, um, the original plan is we had uh, tie-up tournaments. Uh, so we had the first one in Malay Balay. Uh, the idea being again there was that it's uh, hard to bring them here, hard to just have practices all over the place. So they all come for tournaments and we would get to have a, we'll have a training the day before a tournament and then you know teach them what we can basically try to teach them the same stuff that's being taught in Manila um, before each tie-up tournament. So we had the first one in uh, Malay Balay. Uh, we had a tryout also for the TP program. We got I think about eight girls and about eight guys uh, that uh, really impressed us. Um, one of the Lumet, one of the teams coming to nationals this year, uh, they had some some really good players. Uh, but basically, after Malay Balai, we, we kind of, um, this program is it's kind of in the beginning stages, so we're, we're kind of learning, making adjustments, and um, what we realized was not all the best players could come to Friday, especially um, like Malay Balai is a very hard place to get to. Uh, so basically, um, what we're planning to do, and I think hopefully in the next few days we'll get a confirmed field for CDO is that uh, we're going to start using the provincial tie-up tournaments um, also as a as kind of a scouting ground but basically we're planning to organize uh, TP camps around the country uh, like I said the next one we're looking at is CDO and then basically any player pool uh, uh, from anywhere in the country can join and then we're also going to be picking these players from uh, from the tie-up tournaments to come join and also taking some of the local players to fill in to basically have a weekend camp teach them some stuff and again hopefully let them bring it back to their to their teams and their cities and you know, hopefully develop Filipino ultimate a little bit more. So basically the idea for the camps is we're gonna be trying to pick cities that are easy to get to. So we're also looking at Cebu and Davao right now. Um, definitely Manila is another one, um, especially with Worlds coming up. So basically the idea being same with the, the tie-up tournaments like in Malay Balay, every team was allowed to send uh, two to three players for the, the tryout. Um, like I said, next time we're just gonna make it a training. So basically they can send players, we'll do a training, hopefully teach them some stuff, and then again, they can bring it back to their team. So um, that's kind of the direction we're, we're going right now, okay, as far as the program goes. Um, now, one of the things we're preparing for now is, um, is London, so at the moment we have three teams going. We have the Masters team being headed by J-Lo. Okay, so th this team was actually, is kind of out of the program. They were given authority to form the team before, um, before I was um, assigned. So we're working with them, but again, they kind of have their own authority, but they are res representing the Philippines in London. Um, we have the mix and we have a women's team. So we have uh, three teams going to London. Again, I'm hoping this will bump us up with the, you know, in the world rankings again, uh, not just 
on the field, but again, spirit-wise. So uh, definitely, I, I've talked to um, all the, a lot of the coaches, and um, basically, uh, one of the most important qualities that I looked at in a coach uh, is their spirit. Okay, um, I. You know, been part of the Dragons for a long time and been part of a lot of teams. And it wasn't until coaching the kids in London that I realized how much effort it takes to actually win a Spirit Award. I mean, you really need focus, you need dedication, you need to want to play good spirited. And I'm, I'm very proud of the kids that were on that team uh, because they really took it to heart. Um, I want to commend JP, he was our Spirit Captain. He, you know, made sure we scored the other teams, scored ourselves every day, and had good awareness of spirit. So, to me, that's more important than knowing, you know, how to coach is being a good spirited player to lead uh, the players properly. Um, one of the things I, I have asked, um, you know, hopefully it will work, uh, because I notice, like, you know, like we've been to the world several times with the Dragons and what usually happens is you see something happen on the field and then you come off and you talk to a player and you say, you know, yeah, that was, you know, that was, you can correct them, but problem is, you know, you know, they still go back out on the field. So basically I have talked to the coaches, um, again, not the Masters team, I'll, I'll leave them out of it for now, but definitely in the future, um, for me, the players I select, you know, I hope that they that get on the field are going to be representing the Philippines in a spirited way. And I'm asking the coaches also to take the extra step that if they see players that are bad spirited or do something wrong on the field, to really bench them um, and really make a statement and let people understand that it's not acceptable. Um, so that, that's one of the things I learned. You know, again, if I'm coaching again, uh, I'm not going to let them come off the field and just tell them and expect that they're going to improve. But we really need to lead by example. Um, and once I think people realize that the coaches are serious, I think the players will start to take it to heart. Um, so hopefully, again, I, I hope to improve uh, the, the spirit when we compete internationally. Uh, definitely, like I said, it, it was kind of down um, before London, so the kids brought it up. but. Definitely after the next London, I, I don't want to see it go back down. So I will be, you know, that is one of our focuses, hopefully, um, that we'll be able to work on. Other than that, uh, you know, hopefully, like I said, we, we're concentrating this time. Uh, London is a very far place, very expensive place to go. Um, and unfortunately, we cannot send the best of the best in the country. Uh, financially, it's just not possible. So. Basically, we're trying to focus, we put most of our focus on the mixed team, okay? This was actually decided way before AOUC um, that we would, you know, even put some of the other players on the other teams so that they could get the, the playing time. Uh, we, we didn't just put all the best players in mix. Uh, we decided to put some in, you know, somewhere in the open, somewhere in the women's so that we could really get more development and get them doing the things we want them to do so that we can be prepared for worlds. So we're, um, ideally we wanted one really strong team. Uh, uh, I'm happy, happy to say too that, that, that there were some women that were really interested to um, push the women's team. Uh, some of the women that were targeted for the mix. Um, and you know, definitely I, I told them, I, you know, I totally respect that. Um, that people that are willing to sacrifice, you know, like in other words, they knew they can be on the main team that had the best chance to do well, uh, but they were more committed to helping the women and carrying a women's team. So to me, those are the type of people I'm looking for for this program. Um, coaches, players, uh, people that are willing to sacrifice, willing to work as a team, and really, you know, 
look at the overall picture, not just themselves and you know care about themselves, you know, um, and you know where, what team am I going to be on? And um, it's really looking, you know, to push Philippine Ultimate, develop everyone else, teach other people. So those are the type of people I'm, I want to be in charge of of the program, the coaches I look for, and again, even the players I look for. So um, that's about all I have to say for TP. To ramp up communications, um, given the challenges faced last year, uh, four things. One is to decentralize communications. Um, I'll go into detail in a bit. Second is to make community campaigns. Third is to create new channels. And fourth is to partner with other communication groups. So the first one, decentralized, what that essentially means is um, every single project will have a communication hit. Um, and, and that will facilitate faster and more direct communications. So let's say for nationals, which kind of will be heading, you will have a communication set um, just so that information doesn't have to be passed again and again because that delays the release. Um, future, uh, future activities, so let's, um, let's say national um, Manila Spirits or the team program will have um, dedicated um, people for that. Um, but still going to be aligned with the BFDA standard of communications. Second is community campaigns. So we launched this early this month. Um, something, um, if, if you've seen it, you know, why do you love Ultimate? Um, the essential idea there is just to, to go back to our roots as a community and just share um, why we love Ultimate. But really, the bigger, um, the bigger strategy there is just to have some, some communication, although not um, about nationals, not about spirits, but still creating that dialogue between the board and the community and within the community itself, um, particularly in the love periods. Um, next is new channels. So this year, um, hopefully by the end of March, we're going to be launching the BFTA website. Um, been working closely with uh, 4.0. Um, it's, uh, it's a it's a tech company started by um, Orange, Marlon, and, and JP, um, fellow players from this community. And um, content na lang yung kulang, so we're, we're still just gonna publish the content. But a working sample is here in my laptop. So after the meeting, you can feel free to play around with it, give your feedback um, there. The idea there of having a website and how that's going to help us is we have more control and more customizability on what content we can publish. Um, I say control because right now, uh, in the past few years, we've been using Facebook groups. It has been good, but the issue there is, um, let's say we want to announce something the announcement has the same weight as something else, let's say a spam um, post or someone that wants to share um, a different event. So, uh, and there's a, uh, the things that we want to put forward are, in, are, are easy to get lost in, in Facebook groups. Um, but with this, um, anyone, let's say in Manila Spirit is a specific example, it's an international team, they want to see the schedule. Instead of having to dig through the POA groups, they can just go to the website and then see it there. Directions, they can see it there. Um, okay. And lastly, um, partnerships. So, um, one of the things that I want to do this year is to partner with uh, other communication groups, such as All About You, or Philippine Multiverse, or even external to the community. Um, I think there's a, there's a lot of opportunity in that so that whenever there are announcements, they can be echoed through other channels. And at the same time, it's a mutual relationship because these groups are given content to share. So it's a win-win for everyone. Um, yeah.
And on my end, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Um, when I ran for board uh, the last term, the priority ko talaga was uh, for the provincial players to be well represented and um, to give them more opportunities, like be part of the Philippine team, among others. Um, I've tried several times to communicate with um, people in the provinces to uh, form commissions, like Mindanao Commission, Visayas Commission. But then um, a lot of them are willing to help, but they don't want to be formally um, uh, have a position. Uh, under PFDA, parang lahat sila natatakot or lahat sila nakit na babasa nila lahat sa Facebook. So um, they don't want to be part of that. But they've all been um, supporting us and helping us um, with whatever um, uh, request that we ask from them. But then um, this year, um, I have two people. Um, who have uh, stepped up and uh, who are willing to help us to represent uh, Mindanao and um, Visayas. Okay. These two are um, Sheila Gascon from Iloilo. She'll be representing Visayas. And then um, we have here Attorney Maynard uh, from Cagayan. So he will be representing uh, Mindanao. They will be helping uh, PFDA to um, to get the database on how many teams we have from the provinces, um, how many players we have, um, and with whatever um, projects and um, plans that the PFDA have for the provinces. So, yeah. We can take questions, I guess. Okay, I guess that concludes. Sorry, is that the, the date for National Finals in May 20, 20, 20, 20. Yes, the date's for National It's not a concern, Amanda. It's, it's very close to World Because a lot of the... Uh, I, sorry. Um, if we can take the, the microphone so that it can be heard. So the question is, are the dates final? Yeah. That the dates are pretty close <laughs> to... <laughs> pretty close to World all right, so can I answer? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, look, uh, it was uh, it was kind of brought up uh, about it being close to worlds, uh, but I, me as the head coach, and I also discussed with the other coaches. Um, we actually like that. Um, Nationals brings out the best in all our players. It's a very tough competition. Um, definitely there's the risk of injury, which is something that uh, you know, uh, does concern us, but basically we feel it outweighed, it's outweighed by the preparation that the players will put into their teams, um, uh, getting them ready to be in ship tip top shape you know, right before um, world. So basically that's what we were looking at. That, that's okay for us. Uh, and really, you know, there, there was a talk about moving nationals to October and I discussed it with the coaches and we said, no, we, we like it in May. Um, and, you know, it, it, we'll see how it turns out again. If we have some bad injuries, then maybe it was the wrong decision. Uh, but again, <coughs> we're, uh, we'd rather take the risk and, uh, like I said, right now, TP program, with, without nationals there, you know, the practices still aren't really getting organized. Everything's just getting off the road. So we want them at least still committed in their team training and getting prepared for nationals and they'll be in the best shape. Um, and, you know, we'll take them from there. So we're just gonna, of course, try to make sure that they, you know, play safe, uh, we'll, we'll do our best and, you know, keep our fingers crossed.
Um, by papers, you mean like the SEC, SEC registration, BIR, CLR, yeah. business permit, yes. Yeah. Um, and in order to, next question is, we have an existing bank account. No, we don't. We do not. That's not one of the requirements to get SEC documentation and papers. No. That's not. So we don't have a bank account. Not yet. From previous, even from previous. Previous board, we have a, we use, we, we have a PUA. Yes. Account that's still under Cat Reyes. Cat Belayo. Ah, Cat Belayo, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So where? There's no other account so out the, there. So the account was being given to, was, that's why, and this is why we, Asked all that the payments be for Manila spirits to be deposited into Kenneth's account. Yes. Four of them. Ah, yes. There were three. There were three accounts. Three accounts, yes. And who were these accounts? Uh, Kenneth, uh, for the peso account. There was a PayPal account, KZ, and then there was a dollar account, Petrina. Okay. Um, now, the reason why I ask is I want to bring up the recent issue with field availability with MNUC. Um, I am I'm not representing MMC. However, I've been approached by Rika and other members of their board to help with the sponsorship for future events in MMC. Um, having said that, last January 18, uh, last Feb 3, I received a formal letter from MMC board signed by Anjo, who was then commissioner, who is now stepped down as commissioner. To transfer all member, uh, all reservations of ACC from their book, from him to his uh, account under JMJ. And when I approached the PF, when I approached ACC with this, they mentioned to me that all this, all this reservations have been terminated. So right now, MMC has no reservations. And I asked why, what was the cause? When Anjo had already made pencil bookings as early as October for this year. And the reason why they told us is because that the, the account of Anjo, the father of Anjo, whose account is not a personal account, it's a corporate account owned by Magsaysay Transport Logistics Corporation. It's not a personal account. It's owned by a company, the company of Anjo's dad. That they had a pending payment of 1.61 uh, 1.61 million pesos. And I asked them, what was this for? And they said, it was for Manila Spirits. And Manila Spirits happened in November. By first week of Feb, there was still no payment. And that's what I'm asking right now to this board is, why was there such a delay in paying off for Manila Spirits? Because, as, because of that delay of payment, three things happened. Number one, MMEC lost their bookings in ACC, which caused a lot of changes in the schedule. Number two, the account of Andrew's dad with Magsaysay Transport Logistics was this close to being closed on the delinquent members list. To become a delinquent member in Alabang Country Club means that your membership is put up for auction. This is a 3.8 million peso account owned by a corporation. <clears throat> and third is, because of this, the parents of Anjo, the dad of Anjo, yeah, does not want to do, deal with MMUC or PFDA in the future. So that's my question is, why did it take such a long time for this board to pay for spirits? If the money was already and we could have just paid right away, why was there, why was there such a delay? When previous, I would know for a fact as being president in the previous boards and Jude also, that we paid right away. Alabang Country Club is the best fields we have in the Philippines. And we want to make, I've been making it a point to make sure that our relationship with the club is good. If it was 10,000, 20,000, even 100,000, understandable. But 1. 1. 1.61 million is a lot of money. That's all good. <laughs> that's just that's that's Manila Spirits ACCI. That's for the club. That's for everything. That's how much ACC gets. Yes. Yes. Um, 
yeah, that, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a complicated uh, uh, question to answer. It involves several things. Um, with, uh, with the previous board, prior to this board, we, we used my wife's account, my wife's checking account, to, uh, to pay for, for uh, the 2014 Manila Spirits. Uh, that was around 900,000 pesos, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was transferred to my wife's account, and we issued a check to, uh, to, to adjust that. And it was a no. Well, okay, no man. But with a no, with, uh, with this Manila Spirits, uh, we, we actually gave uh, a check to, uh, to, we actually prepared the check already for, for Anjo's father. But we had trouble transferring all the money to, uh, to the checking account. Since we don't have a checking account on uh, PFTA. PFTA. So, um, I think it was during the Christmas break when all of the, uh, when, when everybody was out, uh, that we had trouble really transferring the money. So ang, ang yari, we had a check, but hindi siya pilot, wala siyang pondo. Kasi hindi, hindi ba namin na transfer lahat. It was, you know, uh, four pala, no? Four pounds. Do we get it on the cash on your feet? Four, kasi ang may cash. Okay. Yeah, so we were trying to migrate, uh, trying to migrate three, three accounts and, ano, uh, ang apat na cash on hand into one account. Mm -hmm. Eh lahat ng tao niya naka Christmas break na eh. Hindi namin nagawa. So that was really our failure as a, as, as a board. Na we apologize to the community if, you know, if, if that caused several things. Na, you know, and it was really, I, I talked to Anjo, I apologized to him. Uh, I haven't personally apologized to his father, which I should. Um, ayun, yun yung, ano, yun yung reason really. It's really the migration of all the accounts. Kamunti pang kasuhan ng isa ako yung business ko. Dahil, like, parang po ang yung check eh. Si, who's Bian and Lapas? Who? Yeah. Bian and Lapas. Maybe it's Denise. Bianca Denise. Denise. Bianca Denise. That's a name. So that was the wire transfer that we did? Yes. That was, that was the checking account that we were using. To pay for to pay for uh, my experience. Um, so you've been around for three years. Don't you think that we should have opened a checking account for the PFD? I mean, we've 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 put in so much work, which I think is a really good job of moving away from the PUA and entering into PFDA. But in or but to put that much money into your personal accounts, in my opinion, is something that is very dangerous. Um, we're not, again, it's, that's a lot of money. Eh? And that's not, that's the community's money. It's the money that a lot of previous boards and your board and all the people put in, the money that, that is earned for this community, for the programs, for DP, for all of these things. <coughs> Don't you think that we should make the effort to open a checking account, to open a personal account for the PFDA, and if it if, is it difficult to do, I don't I don't think it's a difficult thing to do. If you can do this SEC and PIR stuff. All right. Um, so yeah, there there are a lot of things I said that need to be done. You know, the new problem because with us right now, we have these one year terms now that we try to. I know we we always we always want to have new boards every year. Right. The problem because with the with the with with setting up accounts is you need you need to always update the general information sheet of your SEC document. Right? In that document it specifies who the treasurer is, who the president is. Right? And the community or the people in Facebook, right? I'm not sure if they all pay their membership dues. Right? Probably not. Okay, are all clamoring for change, change, change. Pero hindi pa nga nababago yun, no? hindi pa nga nagagawa yung account na, na inayos ng previous board. We already want to, to change the people in the, in the new board. Which affects the application sa SEC. Which affects the application sa, ano, sa bank account. Okay, these are all tied up. And I don't think uh, any of the boards except for si Kat Reyes. Na, 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 I'm sorry. Si Kat Reyes. Excellent. <laughs> right. 
Hey, I, I don't know when that account was made. I think it was in the middle of 2000. Come about. 2004. 2004. After that, wala nang ibang account na ano, na nang na, na, nagawa. And I don't think merong bagong SEC registration na nangyari or any renewal. So that that account was never changed. It should have been a new, once the once the new board took over. <coughs> It, there should have been a resolution. There should have been a board resolution, changing the changing the people in the in the SEC registration. Ganon dapat yun. Para dun sa para magreflect dun sa bank account na iba na yung board members. But that never really happened. Uh, yes, nobody did that. Uh, we were trying to we were trying to do that dun sa 20, 20, 2013, 2014 board. Now we were we were really applying for it, pero. You know, people were just swamped with too much paperwork. Because there was a long list of requirements to make a corporate. You know, and and the time there, the kakalabas ng mga mga ano, mga issues sa amla, sa anti money laundering. So, naro naging stake to yung ano, naro naging stake to yung mga banko with the documents that we had to submit. So, you know, those those you know, those circumstances really gave us a difficult time to to establish a bank account. And up to now, na you know, none of us work full time on this you know, on the BFDA. We're all doing this on a voluntary basis. And I worked on permits for seven years in the corporate world, and I understand how much work needs to be done, needs to be inputted in order to make these permits valid. And hindi di namin talaga kaya, hindi namin di namin tinaya na update namin constantly yung permits, lalo na with you know boards changing each year. <laughs> That's why I think really, you know, it should be multiple terms. But at least you, when you send the documents, when you file the board resolutions, when you change the board accounts to, to reflect the, the new set of you know, officers, they should carry on for at least another year. Para yung documents nila, the certificate of registration, the ORs, you know, the bank accounts, these are all valid and these are all, these are, these, you know, they reflect the current board. Okay. Uh, with that huge amount, uh, hindi ba nag-trigger na medyo i-prioritize natin? Kasi ako, readily, I approach the board na tutulungan ko sila mag-open ng account. I work with BPI. Yeah. So, hindi ko alam kung ano na nangyari from there on. With the, with the permits? Like the submission of the GIS or yeah. updated articles of being Well, no, I, mean, I was just going to say, I mean, okay, maybe we, we can't open a corporate account, but maybe just create a separate account for now where all the money should be going and payment should be made. Uh, obviously, you know, going to people's personal accounts and, you know, uh, it, it's very easy for things to get lost. Um, I mean, I think cats, I, I don't know if that was a, was that a, I mean, I know, was it PUA or was it a PUA? It was a PUA account that CAP opened specifically for PUA. Yeah, but, that's being right, so, but CAP basically had to sign every time, yes. for, forever and ever, yeah. even when she was, you know. Um, even when she was but that's why, right, or, or maybe just create a treasurer's position that, you know, that doesn't change, you know, that is really just there for financials and maybe make it a paid position because to me, you know, again, that was one of the things I remember when. Uh, previous board before us and I think up to us I'm not sure when it stopped but there was always like end of the year like financial you know uh, it wasn't very organized <laughs> it was not very corporate but at least some numbers of how much you know was taken in what was paid for what and you know some kind of general accounting but you know that that's to me even if it's not a corporate account or something but a, a separate account where you know, the money don't get lost so easy would, would probably help yeah, um, we actually did that with the, with, the, with the previous board. We opened up uh, a peso account and a dollar account, in a separate. <coughs> pero per, ano sila under, nung tayo under kay Maria. But for this board, we we weren't able to do that. Yung problem namin. No, but if you just continue the same, you should just continue the same account. Yeah. 
signatory. You can change, you can add people to the signatory and take people off the money. Yeah. It's the same account. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so that the money stays in there, it's always there, it's always the same account number. Every Manila Spirit, it's not like a new account, a new account number that they're, that they're you know, depositing into. Everybody knows this is the account. The name may change, but account number, uh, the rest stays the same. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, question. Yes, um, I guess from a financial control point of view, um, I would still say that probably it's best practice that you prioritize opening an account under PFPA yeah. rather than keeping a separate personal account. Because um, the way I heard uh, you presented your plans, a lot of it would be going into several programs, like such as a PP program, you probably need uh, to approach sponsors, etc. And the financial flows from those um, marketing sponsorships should go into an official account yes. for easier auditing, etc. So I guess um, from what I'm hearing is um, you had issues submitting the right paperwork or something? No, we were just remiss with submitting. Okay. Um, if who, who is handling it now? Who is um, spearheading the remediation? Yun? Probably we can help. Okay. Because um, um, I would imagine there are a lot of people in the. If you need help setting up the financials, etc., then we can help. And then um, if you need someone to, um, I don't know, um, kung kailangan may ayusin na paper, probably an auditing firm will usually offer those kinds of services. Yes. yes. So, Sigur, if you can just lead us to that person who would be spearheading this so we could offer whatever assistance yeah. we could extend. We'll, we'll discuss who, uh, who, who will, uh, will inherit the, those tasks. <laughs> okay, uh, I used to do a lot, a lot of that. I did the, I, I headed the, the, what do you call this? Yung paglakad na paperwork for the PFDA uh, during the last board. So if you if you look at I'm at the post by the post yung bylaws and ano? yeah yeah if you can see kami yung mga signatories on yung, yung previous board so and I was the one heading that but but moving forward since I'm not to be there although I'm still I will still ano, <coughs> I will still be available for consultation in yung ano. um so again well I guess you know, the the remaining board members will talk about it. And uh, yeah, that's that's great that you put that out, Joe Dina. Uh, I think one of the uh, one of the one of the biggest lessons that I learned from from this you know, from this from the past two years is really approaching the community to to ask for help. Yun yung ane. Eh. Parang feeling ko kasi parang pag nandun ka kasi parang gusto mong gawin lahat eh. Yun yung ane. Eh. Na hindi mo alam na meron palang si Serge pala who works for BPI who can you know, help us out. You know, you work for City. You know, you understand all of these things, and you know, obviously, you're a better financial person than us. Now, we were really, union weakness on board. Now, we really didn't have, you know, we really didn't have a CPA in our, you know, in our board or somebody who had, you know, concrete financial background. It was, and it would have been easy for us to to, to ask the community, you know, wait, meron ba jang ano, gusto mag volunteer to ano, uh, to to you know, we can we could have probably formed a community na ano. Eh, to help uh, to help out, but, but we did it. And moving forward, I think you know, the next board would uh, should have a uh, should have an auditing committee. I don't know how many, but certainly one has to be a CPA. Yun yung ano uh, yun yung talaga dapat. All of the succeeding boards should have an uh, should have an auditing committee na meron CPA. Regarding that, so that is no, but I think we can work closely with that. We can volunteer our time. Yes. Our to help move that forward. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sophie. Did you have another question? I mean, I think that's what I'm going to do. Tish, 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 Tish. I'm just putting it out there. The Warriors started out as a team of CPAs. So, you have my resources. We actually approached it, eh? Si Maria to help us out with that. Yeah, si Phil, si Jane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were able to help the spirits, but we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're still pretty slow with coming up with a solution. Yeah, we're 
Not yet. Not yet. We're not yet done. I'm not sorry, but I assure you all of the money that you know, that were earned and spent last year will be accounted for, I'm just like you know, <coughs> the previous year. Okay. I'm very curious now about spirits because I I'm uh, being said that you owe ACC one million 1. just for spirits. Yeah. So uh, my understanding is that it's twenty five thousand a quadrant or something. Yeah. And how does it it's run? It's twelve five. So how does it run? It's one hundred twenty-five thousand for the you know three days in the field. It's yeah. Yeah. You, all the money goes to the food and the beer. It's the food and the beer. Yeah. Okay. Nine hundred thousand for the food. Okay. You know, several so the, thirty-three thousand really for mortgage. Yeah. It's a lot of money that we give okay. to ACC. Yeah. So I was just so wondering about that. Don't toss it aside. Yeah, I know. That's okay. Thank you. How many acting board members are there now? Okay. Right now we have only four. Okay. Um, si, well, si Martha Mina resigned you know, uh, last month. Okay, so Martha is no longer on the board. So there are four acting. Yes. <coughs> the four in front. Yes. And, you, and, you're, and you're leaving. Yes. So there will be three. Yes. Is there a turnover for the president? Or um, like who will be leading this? Well, if I had a choice, I would appoint Zikare. <laughs> and, and then uh, we have right now you know, legal counsel, see Attorney Maynard. You know, we were discussing with him how, you know, how, how this should be done. Um, I'm not at all anymore. Uh, my suggestion would be to have, you know, to have elections to fill up the two posts that were vacated. Uh, when that will be, I'm not so sure. Uh, sign up immediately. But, uh, no, but uh, the board really needs a lot of manpower and it really needs a lot of volunteers. Actually, we have, we have money, and so we we earmarked one point two million for the for London, okay, and we're we're waiting on the final number. Only that of us in spirits. So we we earn we earn money from spirits. Around we're not sure we're still little. We're waiting for the final thing. But around three hundred to five hundred thousand pesos. Yeah. 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 Yes. So we have around one point seven million. That's that's the fun the program. It's who wants to create a sustainable program. Well, so. I yeah. Um, the way we set up the the fundraising, because um, we we designed nationals and, and money the spirits to earn money for you know, for the PFDA. Um, like I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, this year this year's nationals had sponsors, money sponsors. Uh, Aside from the reg fees, the reg fees because it practically paid for the entire operational expense of the you, you you earn very little from the reg fees. Even if marami nang sponsors yung local government, okay, meron, <coughs> So really the, the profit from, uh, from nationals was really with, uh, with the sponsors. And, and that, 
that was used for the AOUC. Okay? With with you know, with you London, it, we had we, we used the revenues from the 2014 spirits plus whatever revenue we, whatever we can spare for the 2015 kung kailangan pa. Um, but but since the they're they're working on a really tight budget to uh, to send three teams to, to to London. I mean, obviously we need more money. That's not enough. If you have no more questions, let's take a few items from the survey. One night. Yeah. Um, so taking from the question, what should the TFDA board focus on in 2016? Someone from the NCR mentioned um, review, uh, revision and review of the community's bylaws, focus on open and women's ultimate we're starting to see more tournaments for these. The FDA can continue or follow up on the effort. Reaching out to other Luzon teams, Kigurao, Pampagas, Ubik, etc., that are misrepresented in nationals, since many of the teams are given a bit more attention and slots. For example, we could have nationals, national um, Luzon qualifiers, question mark. More coaching and team leading clinics. Maybe here you can also review and reiterate what spirit of the game means, especially for newer teams and a few old ones. So several items, um, Open Women's Ultimate, um, representation of other Luzon teams, and coaching and team leading clinics. Right. Um, I guess for this question, um, for item, uh, for the last item, um, coaching and team leading clinics, I guess it's a start that we have the Tyler Clinley Clinic, um, which hits that um, concern directly. Um, it's something that we can pursue again, Karen, for 2016, um, maybe for different provinces or for different areas. Um, yeah. Um, for reaching out to other Luzon teams, maybe Karen, you can share something for how the Luzon representative can reach out to the other um, Luzon teams. Uh, actually, now um, <coughs> we're trying to um, make good connections and um, with uh, other Luzon teams. Like um, we're doing nationals in Pampanga this year. Um, that's one step that um, we're taking um, for more involvement outside of Metro Manila within the zone. So um, we'll see if uh, we can find someone who would be willing to represent uh, the other uh, places outside of Metro Manila. And focus on open and women's ultimate. Open and uh, or open and women's ultimate. Uh, <coughs> when right now, yung kidada, yung ultimate championships, um, yung ultimate battlegrounds. And then we're planning na uh, kaya sometime September, October, yung open and women's deals uh, up. Ay, uh, the nationals, uh, since sa Manila yung mix, the try namin mag-reach out sa Visayas or Mindano. Uh, once makahanap ng good venue, right now yung pinaka-best venue is Pacol. And San Carlos. So, yun yung inaay namin na, ano, so sometime September or October. So, yun. Thank you. Um, another, another item, 
Um, wait, does anyone have any follow-up questions to that? Um, another item, um, taking from the question, what areas could the PFD board have improved on in 2015? Um, communication, info dissemination, maybe update the website with simple info as to who is on the board, what are some important information we need, approximately schedules, important documents. By the way, the PUA used to have a site, they can't find it now. I know information might be on FB, but it's really hard to keep track of anything in an uh, FB group page. <coughs> it's nice to be able to see a site with a dedicated about page or something similar. Um, I guess uh, this is under my responsibility in particular. Um, so uh, as mentioned a while ago, we're building a, a website. So if, if you know anyone um, that's, that's interested in helping out writing content, editing, um, I've already, we've already reached out to several people. Um, some are here in the, in the audience. <laughs> um, and we want to roll that out as soon as possible before the, before, the end of, before the end of March. So just in time for nationals, we have something that everyone can see, um, which would hit um, these concerns. Um, so there, uh, I guess uh, taking from, from the learnings mentioned a while ago that we can reach out to the community and helping out. Uh, I'll be releasing a post sometime um, next week about that item, um, finding writers, finding editors or contributors to help uh, create content for this site. Um, yeah. So does anyone have any follow-up questions for that? Okay. Um, I guess let's take one last. Um, so again, from the question, what should the PFTA board focus on in 2016? Mm. Uh, this one, I'm not sure where this is, this is from, but um, transparency when it comes to the money of the community and a non-biased selection of national teams. So it's two concerns, so transparency on the money um, spending, and the second one is uh, uh, a non-biased selection for national teams. Um, I, I, I would think in the same way. There's something else there, Sandy. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Last year we started with the application, so everyone was uh, welcome to send in their applications. Um, so I think it's fair enough that everyone had the chance, the opportunity to send the, their interest, but then um, we had the selection committee headed by June. Uh, and so I think it was uh, fair enough that uh, it, uh, they were given the chance to uh, apply, but then maybe you can. Um, yeah, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we had different plans. Uh, again, um, we were expecting to be having player pool practices where the coaches can evaluate players and really see players. Like I said, we were expecting two days this league. Um, we were actually <coughs> hoping to get some in January, uh, but again, Last minute changes that, you know, um, were kind of came about have now again forced us not to be able to do the things we have planned. Um, definitely, it, to me, it's not the best thing to have uh, picking a team without having any kind of really much training or practice. Um, the only thing we got to do was basically watch the players in the leagues and evaluate their performance. Uh, but to me, um, it's different when you're playing with other players that maybe aren't as good and you maybe have to carry more or do different things uh, and you don't have a, you know, maybe have a different role than what you might be needed on a team. Um, which is why, again, it's very important from our standpoint to kind of get this program rolling where we can actually have uh, TP player pool practices or we've already gone through yeah, two months um, of the year and we, you know, we haven't been able to do that. So. Again, I'm going to be talking with MMUC. Hopefully, 
you know, when they commit something, they can stick to it. Uh, and hopefully, people in the community don't, you know, let them do their jobs, you know, and realize, like, again, um, there, there are bigger pictures involved. So, um, you know, hopefully, again, for the future, you know, definitely that's not the way I want uh, teams to be selected. Um, one of the things I also did, um, I didn't mention earlier, but we also planning uh, to bring a team to Singapore Open um, sometime later, I think it's the first week of August, around August 6, 7, 8. Uh, and again, we're going to prioritize the players that have not gone to London. All the other players that could not make it from the player pool, from the provincial pools, um, we're going to be trying to form a team, uh, really get everyone a chance to represent uh, the Philippines, their country, and be a part of the program. Uh, but again, uh, every year, again, my goal is to have two to three international tournaments that we're going to join. And again, once the program gets rolling, if we're having player pool practices and you know we get to evaluate the players playing against each other, um, doing the things in the systems that we want them to do, um, then I think it would be a fair selection process. So that's the idea. Is right now we're trying to create a player pool of not just you know not just picking the 20 people for the team and they're all the ones that are in the program. We're creating, right now we have about 80 to 90 players in the player pool. I'm um, expecting it might get up to 110, 120. Um, we're actually also doing, we might be getting an under 20 team coming. Uh, we're exploring sending an under 20 team to Poland. Um, we're going to be releasing a letter for that. Uh, we passed it out to some coaches already. So again, they'll all be part of the player pool, all be part of the practices, um, try to really um, develop again the, the younger players um, and include them in the program and like I said just kind of develop and you know kind of commit. Now, one of the things I'm also looking for is commitment. Uh, it's not to me in the future it's not going to be good enough that yeah I, I'm good so I don't have to go to practice I don't got to do this. The people that commit and show up on the field and put the time in um, you know those are good team players. You know it's not necessarily just about you if you're part of a team, it's your job to also improve your teammates, help your teammates. Can't be, I'm good enough, so I don't need to go, and then, you know, they can try to get better and get like me. That, that's not, again, not the type of player I'm looking for. Um, I don't care if we go down first. Uh, I, again, I, I want long-term development. I want to bring in and teach the younger kids that um, commitment and teamwork and, you know, the, the right uh, attitude towards, you know, towards uh, the team and the game uh, is what's going to push you forward and, you know, in the long run, uh, as long as you put that, the good base, you know, hopefully um, it'll push through. Alright, um, does anyone have any follow-up questions to that? Okay, I guess um, if there are no more follow-up questions or any additional questions, we can conclude the soda. Okay. Ah, all right, Chris. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Lavi. So, I mean, next step. I mean, uh, I just found out that we resigned the policy part. I didn't know. And then you resigned now. So, any way forward now? I mean, when, when can we, I guess, as a community, you know, see and yung because I mean we understand even at five people, a hero na patakbo in lahat. Maybe five years ago, simpler your community, simpler your activities, kaya. And then then back then, marami pa ngayon board. You have five na lang. Although may help naman from 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 other channels, but given three na yan, and then you're dealing with nationals, dealing with uh, with sending a, a huge contingent to London, and then. Uh, spirits for this year. And, uh, and immediate plan? What does the bylaw say? If someone resign, they are, resigns, papalitan pa sila, again. So how do we do this? How can we expedite uh, the positions para may manpower tayo? Kasi I think uh, amongst all important things, I guess, yun yung kailangan i address. I mean, which is tied into changing the, the registration, I guess, and then Forming the bank account. Once you have that in place, okay, na dapat to ba? Pero magkakadikit yun. Um, 
actually ngayon ko lang din alam ano mag-resign siya. <laughs> Uh, but um, siguro tatlo na lang kami. Maybe um, this week we will talk and then um, we have uh, attorney Maynard here. Uh, we will consult with him and then uh, most probably we'll have elections for the post. I'm not sure but we'll have to check with him and then um, we'll keep you informed and then let everyone know on what's best to do or maybe <coughs> ask for uh, consult uh, other people as well. So, yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I can't answer that right now. Um, maybe next week we'll have an answer for everyone. For me, uh, ano lang, yung regarding sa local sanction leaks, uh, as, as I see it, medyo hindi maganda yung nangyayari sa leaks na nangyayari. Because probably, iba-iba yung deal, and uh, does the board has something to say about it na bad ganito, iba yung venue, iba yung probably not under your jurisdiction, pero MMUC has something na dapat nagagawa nila yun. And then, you should be able to help them out. Um. Um, we, we do help you know, uh, the MMUC. So, for, I mean, the you venue today, you have you, you know, the previous thing we did, you know, the SADC and the SDC. Those were all uh, through the BFDA. So, um, so yeah, sorry. <coughs> anyway, the, the other venues, other people helped out. Uh, see, si, see, si helped out with, uh, no, with uh, sa Sky Pitch, I think, or the other, uh, the other teams. Um, um, uh, 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 there's always an issue with fields at the, end, at the start of the year. You know, and, and it's it's really oh, I I'm trying to reach out to Pampanga on my own on my own time because there are many fields. Sa Bulacan, there are fields, and and there's a great opportunity for for a lot of people to take the initiative to to start forming there, you know, to start forming whatever uh, whatever league that you want to have, and I think eventually the the MMUC will just become a a sanctioning body for the, for all of these leaks that want to happen. Is it um, like like with the government? Marami sa mga eh, marami sa mga services eventually na privatized. Eh. I mean, the way I see it, I think yun yung direction na ultimate, and it's really up to the ano, It's really up to enterprising individuals to take advantage of that. Follow up. Answer fields are not a problem. There are fields. What we need to work on is just planning ahead. You have to fix your calendar for the entire year. And that's not just in Metro Manila, that's all provincial tournaments. Then that's possible. You can figure out a way. We did this in our board that you can ask in advance when the schedule of tournaments will be. Or more or less a ballpark figure so that you avoid overlaps, you avoid people not being able to go, and you avoid uh, confrontations with two different organizing committees. And that is possible. Um, with what's been happening with MMUC, it's um, I've been I've been helping I've been trying to get their schedule for the last two years, and it's never they do not have a schedule. There is no schedule. We don't know when their next league is going to be until a month before. Um, if we can come out and plan ahead and just fix your, it's like, it's like planning a yearly calendar. It, it's, it's not hard. And we can, it, again, there are fields that are available and it's just a matter of properly fixing your schedule. 
And once you fix your schedule, you can already work backwards with budgets per lead and registration fees per lead. That's something that is very, that, that is possible. It's not impossible. It's a lot of work, but it is possible. By the way, Manila Spirit states, I'm just already announce it now, you have options of the second and third week of November. And the reservation is under me. Just to let you know. Actually, on MMUC, is there uh, who, how many people and who? Right, so the, the question um, is who is on the MMUC, how many people are there? Um, Okay. Hello, good morning. It's BJ uh, from Smart. Uh, sharing logistics. Okay. I'm sorry, communication. CD uh, covers si uh, uh, logistics. Tapos si Lay, nag resign first week. Nag TV. Tapos si Anjo, nag resign before. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it, but I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it for marketing. So, I'm going to get it as a little bit. And then, I'm going to get it as a little bit of Marshall, si Elmo, and si Maji. With that limited manpower, bakit hindi natin kumanap ng ibang tao na makapag-ayos ng tournament na mas maayos? Uh, yung MMUC yung... Pwede yung from dun sa board na yun, pwede sila mag-appoint nung kasi nila lang isama. So, hindi ko rin alam kung ano pa yung plan sila moving forward. Okay. Are the... Um, so, MMUC can decide. Parang they have the authority to decide how the needs will run. Um, are their finances separate from that of the Yes. So they're not appointed or elected, or right? they just decide no. amongst themselves. They were they were appointed, oh, okay. like in practice from the previous. There, there, there hasn't been any election in the MMUC appointment appointments. So. so wouldn't their replacement also be should be appointments? Or no, that's not the process. Should be. Will there be a separate uh, so that, that probably the board can write for MMUC? Because uh, probably probably this is not the proper venue to address those issues. Mm -hmm. But there are there are a lot. Uh, top of my head, just general, it seems like they're trying to kumbaga, bear the weight of the world when undaming people who are <coughs> willing to organize their own. Then they can focus on you know uh, point systems, how to perfect it, or focus on yung mga, yung mga relegation, kung ano mangyayari. Pero it seems like now, dahil napipressure sila to do the tournaments themselves, hindi nila naiisip yung mga kumbaga, implications after or nakocommunicate properly. Like, for example, ranking system. Had the teams known the ranking system a year ago, everyone would have probably planned like what to do. Uh, so, may mga affected doon, like probably nag-merge with another team and then afterwards played as, an, as another team, rankings affected. But after the fact, lahat. So, baka going forward, that's something the MMUC, uh, MMUC can focus on and then just try to uh, delegate what they can to the community. It's good that captains of different pools are talking about. But siguro we need a, a, a bigger forum to properly address those issues and organize ourselves to, to, to do the, the goals that we you know, that, that want to achieve. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, people are just talking online. <laughs> you know, these are the forums that we need to do. We need more people here. But, you know, people are just talking online. Eh, pero you know, we need three days to, you know, just stop and map out things. Parang ganun dapat yung nangyayari. And, you know, I, I guess we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll suggest to MMUC if they're open to that. Maybe you can drive it. Drive the... Kasi, I, I'm not sure if you can get them to actually... I mean, of course, I mean... Sorry, ano ba? 
Siguro, tingin ko sa kanila, baka mat medyo naiilang rin sila to deal with people. So, baka if you can help them and drive, drive them to do it, then probably support them. Yeah, if you can all help them, you know, encourage them instead of, you know, instead of adding to the <coughs> to the online barrage. I'm sure, jeez guys, I mean, we can just, we can just approach them personally. You, you know, malamang friends yung mga sa Facebook, you can DM them, you know, find out what their numbers are. And just, you know, text them, tell them, ask them, you, you need help. And a lot of them are really willing to, know, to take in help, like we are. If, when people volunteer, because we don't think it's easy to help when we don't help. When we come to the end, we want to help when we give help, we need to help. Well, it's really good. Thank you for that. Thank you. 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 I mean, I'm sure all the all those facilities would be great for for you know, for a community planning session. Okay, Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I guess. For <laughs> real. Yes, <laughs> for real. <laughs> for real. Um, soda. Um, so thank you very much, everyone that attended. Um, so feel free to share what you found out um, or, or the things that were clarified today to your peers and your, your teammates. Um, if you have any questions or follow-up questions maybe by tomorrow, just feel free to reach us. Um, we'll do our best to get back to you. Um, yeah, thank you very much and uh, to see you at the party. Good night. <laughs>